They have to be in Switzerland to film the mating of wood ants. It's now or never. I mean, what's the chance for tomorrow? For tomorrow, well, you, ne you never know. <laughs> I was beginning to wonder whether there really were any mayflies in this river after all. But Joseph has to predict not only when the emergence would happen, but where. He finds a sign, small but significant, the freshly discarded skin of a mayfly larva. This could be the prelude to a swarm. And what's more, it gives Joseph a clue as to where it's most likely to happen. The next evening, the conditions look perfect. Sunny, warm and still. All eyes are on Joseph. <laughs> we have a living proof right now that mayflies are still in this river. It's just right here. I'm very pleased. Only one, but one is better than nothing, and it means the rest to come. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, according to Joseph, anyway. <laughs> Thank you. Joseph was right. Soon, one was followed by others, and then hundreds, then thousands, and hundreds of thousands, until the spectacle was dazzling. Joseph had not only brought us to the right place at the right time, well, almost the right time, but also to the most impressive hatch he had ever seen. With just half an hour left of golden sunlight, all that remained was for me to do my piece, and the sequence would be in the can. The powers of flight of the mayfly are not great. Just two pairs of rigid, unfoldable wings moving in a rather uncoordinated way. But that was the kind of flight used by the first creatures ever to fly on Earth. And to see how the extraordinary world of insect flight developed from there, join me for next week's episode of Life in the Undergrowth.